Hi everyone, today I'm going to be answering a question submitted by one of our viewers around paranoia. Hi, and welcome back to the Living Well with Schizophrenia channel. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I make videos about what it's like to live with schizoaffective disorder or schizophrenia. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, if you would like to help support the creation of videos like this one, make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page. Through Patreon, you also gain access to our private Discord server where we are offering um, peer support through various means such as text channels as well as video groups. Um, so if that's something that interests you, make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page. So this video is the first in a new series that we're trying out. We asked you, our audience, to submit scenarios or um, situations from your life that you wanted advice on in regards to living with schizophrenia or a psychosis related illness. So before we dive in, I just want to give a little disclaimer that, you know, I do have a background of education in social work. Um, I've worked as a social worker in mental health, in the mental health field, as well as other fields. And I also live with schizoaffective disorder. So where I'm coming at in terms of giving these advice segments is just kind of trying to bring together these two perspectives. But again, it is all from my perspective and my lived experience. And I am not a medical practitioner, a medical professional. So this is not by any means medical advice. All right, so getting right into it, I'm going to read um, what one of our viewers submitted. So they asked, do you have any recommendations on how to deal with paranoia? I cannot shake the notion that my partner and my psychiatrist are spying on me and are secretly seething mad at me. I am terrified at what they might do. What can I do to make this better? Um, so I just want to commiserate for a little bit. Like I have completely experienced this as well. Um, I, I wouldn't say often, but especially when I'm going through more difficult periods, I have, um, paranoia around my doctors and my psychiatrists particularly. And sometimes that bleeds into my relationship with Rob too, where I feel like they are in collaboration against me or, you know, they're colluding behind my back for whatever reason. And so this can be really, really hard to deal with because, you know, you're supposed to be able to trust your medical providers in order to give you proper care and have a good working relationship with them. And obviously you also want to trust your partner who is probably one of the most important people in your life that you should feel safe with. And so when this paranoia creeps up, it can be kind of debilitating and really harmful for your relationship. So I understand how difficult it can be. So what to do when this creeps up? For me, it's taken a really long time to figure out what is actually effective, but I think communication is probably the biggest component here. So communicating what you are feeling and thinking to your partner, as well as to your doctor or your psychiatrist. I think their first reaction is going to be, oh no, I'm not mad at you, or oh no, I'm just trying to help you, or you know, because that's what they're, that's the truth probably. And so, you know, that's not always super helpful because that kind of just feeds the delusion because it's like, well, yeah, that's what you would tell me if you hated me or that's what you would tell me if you were colluding behind my back. And so that's kind of a tricky obstacle to overcome too. But I think what has been helpful for me, especially when dealing with my partner, Rob, has been, you know, acknowledging like that must feel really hard or that must feel really not good. Not, you know, thinking that he's mad at me or thinking that he doesn't like me or thinking that he's colluding with my psychiatrist and kind of um, addressing the delusion or the paranoia in terms of how it's making the person feel rather than trying to counter the paranoia or the delusion, you know, straightforwardly. And so I think that that's kind of a good workaround because it's validating the way the person is feeling. And it's also kind of proving that they care about you and that they have your best interest at heart and that they probably don't hate you and they probably are not colluding with your psychiatrist behind your back. Another kind of anecdote that I'd like to share that was kind of an example of building trust with my care provider and um, having an understanding of when I'm struggling and cues that I might be struggling and how to accommodate it. So I, it was like the week before I was last hospitalized and I was not doing okay. Um, Rob and I were in my therapist's office um, and 
she she had called her supervisor in for additional advice or instruction or whatever in terms of how to deal with our situation. So he came in and it was kind of set up where my therapist's uh, desk was next to the door. And then there was a window facing across from there, across from the door and the desk where Rob and I had our backs to. And I was in the far corner of the office and the door was over here. And so her supervisor came in and he sat down in the available corner, which was in front of the door. And my therapist immediately picked up on the fact that I became very, very visibly uncomfortable. And she knew because of previous interactions that we had had that I probably was feeling very paranoid about her supervisor's positioning within the room because he was blocking the door. So that made me very paranoid about being entrapped into in the room and that they were going to trap me there and take me to the hospital and that kind of thing. And she just kind of picked up on the fact that I was very uneasy about that and said, Lauren, would you be more comfortable if my supervisor moved? And I was kind of in a nonverbal state at this point, but I was just able to nod yes. And that helped just, just kind of dissipate the situation a little bit. So what I'm getting at with this is just the importance of building a relationship with your care providers, your doctor, your psychiatrist, as well as with your partner, so that hopefully they can kind of pick up on when you're struggling with paranoia as it pertains to them and maybe work toward accommodating that being the case. So thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so, so much to the viewer who submitted this question or scenario that they wanted advice for. I hope my answer was somewhat helpful. If you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and just a reminder again to check out the link to our Patreon page if you'd like to support the creation of these videos. Um, if you have your own question or scenario that you'd like advice for, feel free to submit that. We have instructions on where to send that in the description below. Thank you so much again for watching and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.